السلام عليكم أنا عليا أدبي professor of pediatrics and pediatric cardiology at Ain Shams University. I'm going to talk to you today about congenital heart disease. I'm going to lay stress particularly on the asymptomatic heart disease. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to enumerate the causes of congenital heart disease. And we're going to understand why we have to know the causes. Anticipate cardiac lesions associated with different syndromes so that when you see a patient with a particular syndrome, you can say, oh, most probably I have to exclude this type of congenital heart. Identify the clinical subgroups of congenital heart disease. How are they classified? Recognize the clinical presentations of the more common isionotic cardiac anomalies. And this is very important to understand we, we have to know what the patient comes and says, not what is written in books. Does the patient come and say dyspnea, orthopnea, or maybe he has other complaints in his own words? We have to know the list of investigations that aid in the diagnosis and management of isionotic heart disease, identify the complications of such abnormalities and enumerate the treatment options that are available for each cardiac abnormality. In general, congenital heart disease is the most common single group of structural malformations in infants. The incidence is of an 8 in 1000 live births and is higher in stillbirths and abortions. And that is why when a young mother is pregnant and she has got a stillbirth or a, a newborn, uh, or she pregnancy doesn't continue and they're so sad we say please don't be sad because maybe that baby had multiple congenital anomalies and it is better that you lose such a pregnancy than have it 10 to 15 percent have complex anomalies with more than one cardiac abnormality that is to say in a single patient you can have a vsd transposition of the great arteries pulmonary stenosis atrial septal defect they are so complex and it's a blessing that we have normal hearts. An associated non-cardiac abnormality is present in 10 to 15 percent and that is why if you find a patient with a renal abnormality you have to look for a cardiac abnormality and exclude it in that patient. The relative frequency of the congenital heart diseases puts VSD on the top of the list. It is the most common in all studies. Not all studies give you the same percentages of congenital heart disease, but VSD is the most common isionotic heart disease and tetralogy of fallow. This is the tetralogy of fallow. It is the most common isionotic heart. Maybe in some studies they say transposition of the great arteries is as common, but the tetralogy of fellow is the most commonly seen. What is the etiology of congenital heart disease? The importance of that question that parents come and ask you. And you can prevent congenital heart disease with certain uh, precautions. So the number one answer is that it is sporadic. There is no identified cause in many of the cases, and sometimes uh, people get divorced, young couples get divorced, or parents get divorced because of congenital heart, so you have to be very particular of what you're saying to the patients and addressing the problem because they are always shocked when they know that the child have a, 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 has a congenital heart. It is, has got genetic basis, so it is more in some families. It may be part of a syndrome, as for instance, the Down syndrome. They have got commonly an atrioventricular septal defect, and we're going to discuss this. Maternal disease, whether an acute infection, chronic infection, or a chronic disease, for instance, like diabetes, and we're going to mention that later on. Irradiation can cause congenital heart. Teratogenic drugs, antiepileptics, thalidomide is a known teratogenic drugs, and many others. And that is why by the end, they say that it is of multifactorial inheritance. That means that many factors contribute to the occurrence of a congenital heart disease. How is it classified? It is classified into isionotic group, cyanotic, and other abnormalities. The isionotic, by far the most common, are the shunts, or the potentially cyanotic, because they get cyanose later, sometimes on exertion, or maybe later in life. And 
these types are the atrial septal defect, the ventricular septal defect, the PDA, and the atrioventricular septal defect, and we're going to discuss them today. The semilunar valve lesions like the pulmonary stenosis and the aortic stenosis, atrioventricular valve lesions like the congenital mitral regurgitation and mitral stenosis, and these are rare ones, obstructive heart lesions like the coarctation of the aorta. The cyanotic lesions are divided into those with an increased pulmonary flow and those with a decreased pulmonary flow, and cardiac malpositions and coronary abnormalities are also cardiac abnormalities forms of congenital heart disease. These are the syndromes that are present with congenital heart disease, and we're going to see discuss each one of them. This is trisomy 21, or Down syndrome, in which you find this three chromosomes present, 21 chromosomes, chromosome number 21, three of them are present. This is the trisomy, and the Down syndrome Patients, they just look alike. This is a picture from the net, this one of our patients. And these patients have got the most common atrioventricular septal defect, BSDs or ASDs. Trisomy 18 or Edwards syndrome. This is a V4 of a trisomy. And the patients have, have got multiple congenital anomalies, as you see, with clenched fists, rocker bottom feet, multiple abnormalities. They have VSDs, ASDs. PDA, coarctation or bicuspid, aortic and pulmonary valve, and these patients don't live long, they die early in life. Trisomy 13, another trisomy that is compatible with life, they don't live long, they die by the first year, few months of life or first year. They have VSDs, ASDs, PDA, coarctation, bicuspid aortic valve or pulmonary valve. The Turner syndrome. The only patient that lives with 45 chromosomes, phenotypically they look like females and they might be having a bicuspid aortic valve or coarctation of the aorta. So if you have, see short statured females with primary amenorrhea or having this cubitus valgus and webbing of the neck and the chromosomes show you 45 chromosomes with absent of this extra y, the y chromosomes or another x you should look for a coarctation of the aorta and this is what we were talking about anticipation of congenital heart you find the syndrome you have to exclude a congenital heart in that syndrome the Noonan syndrome these patients have pulmonary stenosis asds and cardiomyopathy and look at the patients i got you many pictures of patients. so you see that in syndromes they look quite alike this these from the net and this is one of our patients in fit of diabetic mother, they are macrosomic big babies, and you have to exclude that they have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, exclude a VSD or conotruncal abnormalities. Conotruncal abnormalities are those uh, are those of the normalities of the trunk, which is the aorta and the pulmonary trunk when they are getting out of the heart. So it is tetralogy of fellow, transposition of the great arteries, and Truncus arteriosus, these are examples of conotruncal abnormalities. The congenital rubella syndrome, one of the most severe syndromes due to congenital rubella, and in this syndrome, the patient may be having microcephaly, patent ducts, arteriosus, and cataracts. When the parents come for genetic counseling and they ask you, what is my chance that I have a baby with a congenital heart? In general, we say it is 1%. But if they have another child with a congenital heart, we say, if you have one sibling, it is two to six percent. If you have two, two, two siblings with congenital heart, your chance in the third child is 20 to 30 percent, and this is nearly one third of the offspring. Now we're going to see this case scenario. An eight month old infant presented to you with fever, persistent cough, tachypnea and tachycardia. Tachypnea means rapid respiration and tachycardic. The mother gives history of repeated chest infection and poor weight gain. What are you suspecting? What will you do? Now, I want you, after we are going to talk about the other congenital heart disease and their presentations, we are going to discuss this case scenario in our face-to-face -face session. So please be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session about this part and 
good luck